My name is Margaret Morrison McLeod. I manufacture aromatherapy products um, and I produce those both under my own brand, which is the Divine Hag, and for other clients under their own labels with different recipes. So I manufacture um, aromatherapy mists, candles and balms. There are various other things on the way, but for the moment that's mainly what we are um, concentrating on. The brand is called The Divine Hag um, because I started it when I was 55 and I have always had inspiration from older women, especially my grandmother. Uh, who I was very close to as a child and I believe that lots of children are very very close to their grandparents. Um, I'm also from Oban which is in the west coast of Scotland. Uh, my family were from Barra. I was very influenced by the highlands and the rawness of nature and everything and being out and being in touch with the elements was very much what I wanted to bring in to my branding and my product. The um, Divine Hag is the third stage of the sort of journey of being a woman. So you have the younger woman as the maiden and then the middle stage as the mother. And that doesn't necessarily mean being a mother. It means being at that middle stage of life. And then the older stage is the hag. I worked as a charter surveyor for about 25 years. And I actually started that when I had my younger, my older two, rather than they were young then, my older two children. And that was fine and I quite enjoyed that and I actually do still love buildings and building technology and design and architecture, etc. But I realised that I was becoming increasingly ill going into buildings. Um, as I got older, it got worse and it was... Um, what happened was the triggers to my migraines became worse. I've had migraines since I was 12 and I'd had all different kinds. And from when I was about 30, 32, scents began to affect me quite badly. And fragrance and artificial fragrance. And I realised that flowers, essential oils, etc. didn't affect me, but artificial fragrance got to the point where it could give me an almost instant migraine. So obviously it became very difficult going in and out of people's homes. And at one point it got so bad that they thought I'd had a stroke. So I couldn't work for quite a long period of time. And during that time, I, it was really good because it gave me time to stop and think. And I started a diploma in aromatherapy. I did that and then I kind of toyed with what am I doing? And I was on the beach in Oban on the 1st of January 2017 with my sister and it was the beach that we'd grown up on a lot of the time but really it was and it's very it's quite rocky and quite elemental and I just had this moment where I fell in touch with the past and with again the women the elders of my family who had passed and I just thought I need to do this because I'm not not getting any younger and I want to bring something that I'm good at and something that's beautiful and pure out. Um, so part of it was for me and part of it was also to give people like me a, a better choice, more of a choice of you know, being able to have sense in their own, sense in themselves, sprays that would actually, the properties of the oils would help them but they would also smell really good and it would make them happy and a lot of it is about raising your vibration and making you happy. When I first started doing this, I was actually in London and I worked and did it sort of in the evenings and part time for almost two years. And I um, entered, took this mad turn and entered a cosmopolitan competition and was one of the 10 female winners. Uh, and part of the um, prize was a month in a sort of collaborative workspace and it was amazing and I met someone who I she's in a company now that I actually do a lot of work for um, I wrote a lot of my stuff there it was extremely it was very nurturing and collaborative and it was great 
Um, but then when I moved to Glasgow, I couldn't, I couldn't do the manufacturing and do the things anywhere similar. I couldn't find anywhere similar. Uh, so I took what was a shop unit at the time just to have a base and have somewhere to get started. And then last year that lease ran out and I found the Whiskey Bond. Great having that other creative energy around you and you know people who maybe make ceramics that you can use as vessels for candles or people that give you different problems that you can solve. Um, so that's really why it was really more to be near other people and have a bit of a creative space. So for the sleep um, mist that I make, it has things like geranium and rosemary in it. And geranium has had quite a lot of studies done that show it can lower the heart rate. It's used quite extensively in pregnancy, um, in late massage and labour, because it helps relaxation. So I'm melding that together with a little bit of lavender, so as you do get some, you know, you do get the goodness of it and things like chamomile, which is very restful, very calming, and helps with anxiety. By putting several things together and melding them together in the right proportions, that induces relaxation, and it's relaxation that leads to sleep. When I make a mist, I will do different concentrations of, I make it up to a certain, you know, like half a liter, and I add drops, and the drops are all the same size so I can then go back and do weights to calculate it for a greater amount um, because the oils don't all weigh the same amount so the drops aren't all exactly the same. So my process for making that is once I've done that and I've got the recipe and I do it the way I want it I then make it up in larger quantities. So what I do is I make it up in concentrations in bulk and then have you know for instance I have a flask off because um, it's all stored in aluminium flasks so I'd have a flask of the concentrated sleep and then that would be mixed with water if it was a mist and there'd be a certain amount say 20 millilitres to a litre or whatever and that would be mixed and then it would be poured. The process of candle making once I've got the and it's kind of similar in how to do the recipes and things. And then you have to look at the ingredients that you used, the amount, and do your candle safety according to the legislation. So we do that. And the actual making of candles, the candles are obviously poured, in, not in bulk, you know, but maybe up to 100 at a time. And then the next day, the wicks are cut, and I then every single candle is hand finished with a, a little heat gun. The plans for the future are to bring my daughters in more uh, because, because we actually are the maiden, the mother and the hag. I've got a 21 year old, a 38 year old and myself and we have actually been working more and more closely together. We have more products coming out. I've got beard oils, I've got more hand balms, more balms that have, all, that have evolved. The Beastie Balm, which is for the midges and the great Scottish summers. The three of us have sort of come together and we're doing a bit of a project for moon subscription boxes. So you can have a full moon ritual. Um, and more bath salts. You can reach the Divine Hag at Instagram, the underscore divine underscore hag. Um, Facebook, it's the Divine Hag, and www.thedivinehag.co.uk is the website.